I'm Dr. Lancelot Pinto. I'm a consultant respirologist uh, at the PD Hinduja National Hospital and Medical Research Center, Mumbai. So the diagnosis of sleep disorders uh, spans an entire spectrum of the different disorders that you can have. Uh, the most common disorder that we see in sleep is obstructive sleep apnea, which is essentially a disorder in which uh, individuals who snore uh, tend to drop their oxygen levels during sleep or tend to wake up during sleep and have fragmented sleep. Uh, the diagnosis uh, of such a sleep disorder about 10 or 15 years back would involve an admission to a hospital, uh, a night of, uh, of intense analysis uh, with different electrodes placed across the body, which was called a polysomnogram. Uh, that still remains the gold standard uh, for diagnosis today. But nowadays, we also have options uh, of diagnosing obstructive sleep apnea at home uh, via portable devices. So this would involve a night of study at home where an individual's breathing patterns would be analyzed throughout the night, uh, where, we, where you would look at their oxygen levels throughout the night and see how many times the oxygen levels uh, dip. And based on the frequency with which this problem occurs, we would uh, categorize different severities of uh, sleep apnea associated with this. So this was as far as the most common sleep disorder is concerned. There are also other sleep disorders that we're interested in, such as uh, insomnia, for example, uh, where devices such as actigraphy are new, uh, relatively new in India, and which can be used to look at sleep patterns during the course uh, of the period in which a, an individual wears a device. So it, it gives us an idea uh, as to the, the sleep quantum, uh, the sleep quality that a person has throughout the course of uh, wearing the device and therefore gives us an idea to suggest uh, interventions that would help uh, uh, a person sleep better. There are also other tests which are being done, especially from a workplace uh, kind of a perspective, uh, such as a maintenance of wakefulness test, which looks at how sleepy an individual is and therefore would possibly convert into job performance. Uh, we also do some tests such as the multiple sleep latency test, uh, which is used for rarer diseases such as narcolepsy. So there's an entire gamut of tests that we now have accessible to us in the field of sleep uh, to diagnose a various uh, uh, spectrum of sleep disorders that we see these days. So India uh, right now is going through an obesity epidemic. Uh, we have the syndrome X that we talk about, uh, which is very common in Asians. And obesity goes hand in hand with diseases such as sleep apnea. There's a strong correlation between an individual's body mass index and individual's neck girth and the prevalence of sleep apnea. And uh, studies have estimated that anywhere between 5 to 10 percent of middle-aged Indian ma males uh, have sleep apnea. And uh, the figure is slightly lower for women. Although women, as they grow older, start approaching the same rates of prevalence as far as uh, males go. The difference globally in India, I think, is that globally uh, they've kind of tackled the tip of the iceberg. A lot of individuals who have overt sleep apnea have been diagnosed and are on treatment. Whereas India, in India, this being a new field, we still haven't touched the tip of the iceberg. We're still treating far more, far less patients uh, than we ought to, given the number of uh, comorbidities and the number of diseases associated with sleep apnea that we are clearly facing an epidemic of. So sleep apnea has various impacts on the economy. Uh, if you think of a long-term perspective, sleep apnea is strongly associated with high blood pressure with cardiovascular disease, with the prevalence of strokes uh, in the long run. Uh, there is new literature suggesting that sudden cardiac death, you know, individuals who die in the middle of the sleep for no apparent reason, uh, has a strong link with sleep apnea. We know that multiple cardiac uh, arrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation, are associated with sleep apnea. So if you look at the number of diseases that are associated with sleep apnea and therefore impact the overall healthcare system, these are individuals who are going to be a big drain on the healthcare system eventually. And picking up sleep apnea at an earlier stage, diagnosing it earlier, and treating such individuals may potentially have an impact on the course of their disease and therefore reduce the economic burden uh, on the healthcare system. So that's one, one aspect when we talk about disease. When we talk in terms of productivity, sleep apnea is associated with a poor, poorer quality of life overall. If your sleep quality is poor, it's likely to translate into a poorer quality of life during the day. Individuals with sleep apnea are known to have slower reaction times. Uh, they are known to be more likely to be associated in vehicular accidents. Sleep apnea has been attributed to be the cause of, uh, of aircraft disasters as well in the past when aircraft investigations have been done. And this clearly will have an economic impact. Uh, I think employers often focus on the quantum of time that individuals work at the workplace, 
whereas the quality of that time probably is reflected by the quality of the sleep the previous night and therefore there's a strong correlation uh, in terms of the economics there as well. So I think the biggest challenge associated with sleep disorders in India is, uh, is awareness. Uh, most individuals think that snoring uh, equates to a good quality of sleep. I have patients very often telling me that he snores so well, so he has fantastic sleep. Whereas people need to realize that snoring is not necessarily normal. Snoring could be pathological, snoring could be associated with the drop in the oxygen levels, it could be associated with all the diseases that I have mentioned so far. And uh, therefore raising the awareness is the number one challenge that we face. Uh, we also clearly have an epidemic of sleep apnea which is going hand in hand with the epidemic of obesity, uh, hypertriglyceridemia, diabetes that we see in our country. Uh, and unfortunately, although the awareness for diseases such as diabetes, for high blood pressure is increasing, people are getting more aggressive about checking themselves regularly for diseases such as these. Uh, the same kind of awareness unfortunately does not spill over uh, when it comes to sleep. And that's true both uh, from a patient perspective as well as a healthcare provider perspective. You know, specialists need to be more and more aware, uh, especially if you're working in the fields of cardiology. We know that even kidney diseases have now been associated with sleep apnea. One needs to be more aware and therefore one needs to test uh, with, with, with a greater frequency uh, for sleep apnea. So I think, I think that's the biggest challenge. Once we start testing more, we will diagnose more and, and that will eventually lead to more people being on treatment. So I think the medical fraternity across the board needs to be more aware uh, of the association of sleep apnea with a wide variety of diseases. And I think this kind of education needs to begin right from uh, the, the MBBS level or at the early stage of medical education. Uh, almost every field across the board uh, in medicine is, is in some way linked to sleep apnea. Uh, diseases such as depression, uh, diseases such as uh, heart disease, kidney disease, uh, control of sugars in diabetes have all been linked to sleep apnea and the control of sleep apnea has been shown to improve outcomes in all of these diseases. Therefore, I think specialists across the board need to be aware of this uh, association and need to aggressively pursue a diagnosis of sleep apnea whenever their patients suffer from any of the comorbidities associated with it. Right, so I think that's, that's an excellent point. Uh, so especially in industries where individuals uh, performance is related to the health of other individuals such as aviation, such as uh, you know people who are truck drivers and, and, and go across borders and therefore are on, are on the road, uh, people who are school bus drivers for example. Uh, one needs to make sure uh, that they are well rested, one me needs to make sure that their uh, reflexes are intact, uh, that they are not sleepy individuals and, and I think we need to have some sort of a regulation uh, where individuals who are in such professions need to have some sort of a screening to make sure uh, that their quality, A, that their quality of quality and quantity of sleep is adequate and B, their performance during the day reflects that uh, their, their quantum of sleep is adequate. There are tests such as the maintenance of wakefulness test that can be done to make sure that individuals are not excessively sleepy and I think regulations need to be in place especially for industries where this is of relevance.